How's it going, you guys? So it's springtime, springtime's here. I figured, you know, the bass bite's gonna start going off as soon as you guys saw our last sand bass video, we did pretty well. So I decided to make my first tackle video for you guys. Kind of was requested in the comments and stuff and DM to me. So uh, here I am making a tackle video. And yeah, guys, let's get straight into it. So basically first we'll go for the calico bass and uh, we'll hit you with the cold snipers. Sometimes I'll throw these through the kelp instead of the surface irons. And I'll throw these little guys through the stringers and stuff by them. And I've seen calico just come out and smoke them. I mean, obviously not really this color. I don't really use this color, but it's the only cold sniper I had on hand. And yeah, I like to use these and for sand bass as well. A trick for sand bass on these guys is you go down to like Isers Reef for say, or somewhere, you get a um, squid tips and you kind of just like pull it slowly up and down. You look at calico's in that too, but it really does a good job on the sand bass. Just slowly doing that. And iron time. So personally, this is a Taddy A1. Um, personally, like I like throwing the irons a lot. And um, they're super fun, especially for like yellowtail too, obviously, and like mahi and stuff. But for calico bass, they are really fun. It's a really old school way of doing it. And it works well. I'm telling you guys, it works well. When you get them fired up in the iron, nothing beats it. And next, we got our jerk baits. I actually have been throwing these little shadow wraps every now and then. Calicos seem to like them, but um, it depends on the size. If they're dialed in on bigger things, SP minnow, way to go. I love throwing this SP minnow, the action's great, and calicos are always smoking them. They have pretty sturdy hooks, pretty sturdy. I'm not gonna say super sturdy because as you guys saw in our striper video, hooks were getting bent out, but those are bigger fish. So, but I imagine a big calico could bend one of these. So if you guys ever wanna change out the hooks for bigger ones, I'd recommend it, honestly. They can get bent pretty easy, but um, they're a great bait, um, swim well, and honestly, like probably my favorite jerk bait for calicos. For line, I go anywhere from 40 pound to 15 pound. 15 pounds I'll use if I'm fishing in like Long Beach Harbor or something, and the calicos are kind of a line shy, which actually happened to me a couple of times, and the 15 pound seems to get them to go. But my medium is always 25 pound, especially for Long Beach Harbor, some kelp areas and Palos Verdes and stuff, they go off. But if I'm fishing like somewhere with a lot bigger bass and they're not line shy at all, 40 pound always seems to be the move. I mean, I always say fish locked up drag when you're fishing these fish. I mean, you guys are using 400 size reels. Like I, for Calico's big ones, I use my Pen 400. Every now and then I use my Lexa 400, 300. But the thing is with the Lexa 300, I hook some big sand bass on there. And I mean, they will pull the locked up drag on that thing. Like, and I've had it happen. But um, that's why I recommend using 400 size reels and I recommend using heavier line, but if they are line shy, it happens, then go for the lighter line. Next, we are getting into the swim bait side of things. So obviously swim baits are the most renowned way to catch these fish. I mean, you can go all, all big, get your nine inchers, get your big swim baits right here, get your lead heads. This is obviously too small a lead head for this bait, but uh, I'm completely out of lead heads. But yeah, so basically you got all the sizes of swim baits. Colors can be huge depending on what the fish are keyed in on once again. But honestly, sometimes, sometimes these bright colors that my girlfriend will get me, I guess as like a gift or whatever, like sometimes these random colors always work the best, but sometimes the bright colors will be good. Honestly, pink colors do get bit. I'll give pink colors that. But um, size is huge. So basically always look for sand bass, calicos, even spotties, always look, be like, huh, look around. If you see the bait that they're dialed in on, if they're dialed in on bait this size, right? And they're dialed in on it. They're dialed in on like a little, like three, four inch thing. And then you're throwing this, the odds are the average grade fish in there is not gonna go for this. They're gonna go for this, or maybe something a little bit bigger like this, just maybe. And honestly guys, keying in on that stuff is huge. It's like huge. Next, we're getting into the lead heads. So right here, underspin lead heads. I love them. They get bit real good. Get that little underspin there. These are the Miki underspins. I like these a lot. I like the style of their lead heads and they work absolutely great. Next, we got weedless lead heads. Obviously, weedless is key when fishing the kelp, guys. Key. You don't wanna be sagging up in the kelp every two seconds, so get yourself some weedless swim baits and you will do fantastic out there. And, but for sand bass, when fishing deeper structure, 
I go for heavier heads and bigger swim baits, especially on some of the stones out there. Honestly, big swim baits out there on those big stones, you'll get some monster sand bass doing this. And, um, and then I sometimes I'll throw like these little weedless baits too, depending on what time of year and stuff and what's happening in the kelp. But this is like smaller weedless stuff. It's not always just swim baits. It's got these plastics like these, like super realistic looking. I mean, I love the Fish Lab 13s. These things like they go crazy. And I mean, I've had birds try to pick these off. That's how I know it's looking real. And once again, these things get bit. Next, I'll be going into the scented baits. So right now, these gulps right here, especially for the winter time, if you're fishing like sand bass in Long Beach Harbor in the winter time, these scented gulps seem to just get bit, like bit, bit. And I don't know, it's probably just because of the scent on them. You don't really have to do much. It's not the scent the bottom, twitch it once or twice, and it'll get eaten. And super fun way, even for spotted bay bass, they're fun. And if you get the bigger size, because this is a five inch, you can always get bigger. I think the bigger size is bigger, I'm pretty sure. But that could go dumb for calico. I promise you, anything with scent always goes dumb for these fish. Next, we will be getting into the tube baits. As you guys know, I use a lot of hookup baits. Honestly, these things get bit by everything. These tube baits get bit by everything and they will outfish swim baits. I know that for a fact. I've seen it happen many times and they get bit a lot. So here we have the hookup baits and here's like the heavyweights, two different tube baits. They have different little looks to them. But yeah, guys, these get bit a lot. You can either fish them on the single rig, which just trying straight onto it and you'll get bit like phenomenally bit on them. And for sand bass, you'll let that sink to the bottom. You can slow drag it as I was going over my last video, just slow dragging it and you'll get sand bass. But for calico, you can just wind it, wind it through the kelp and, the, and make sure you cut the tag ends guys. Cause if you don't cut the tag ends, they kind of swim like all funny and sideways. But if you cut the tag ends good, they'll swim straight and kind of do like a little this and that, that gets bit. Or what I like to do is fish a double rig and just give it like a rip up like that and the baits will swim through each other. But when you're tying on the double rig, guys, make sure one is shorter than the other. It should look like that. Like one hookup bait here, one hookup bait down here, and they'll swim through each other like that. And you just let it sink, and those things just get popped. Especially when fishing deeper water, like if you're fishing calicos on a wreck or something, let these sink, and most of the time on the sink, you will get bit. That's just most of the time. And colors on the two baits are huge sometimes. I've noticed like this gold, this like, golden brownie kind of color goes really good at Catalina, for example, while this green color does phenomenal in the harbor and like Long Beach Harbor and stuff. And same with the black colors and stuff. So yeah, guys, two baits, in my opinion, are one of the best ways to fish them because I don't know why, but they just seem to get bit, bit. So reels when it comes to bass fishing, for example, like, Calicos and sand bass, always get yourself a low profile. It makes life easier, more fun. This is my Lexus 300. I've had this thing for like two, three years now. And this thing has not treated me wrong once. I love this reel, but this is not my big fish reel. Like this is not the reel I'll be fishing big calicos on. It's like if you go down to San Clemente Island, Catalina, I won't be fishing a 300 size reel. Because in my opinion, when you hook the big fish and I've had locked up drag on this thing, it can give. Like for example, if you guys saw my video from a while back, I caught a big uh, sand bass down Long Beach Harbor and the drag gave, he got himself in a rock. I was lucky to get him out of there. But I do love the 300 size reels. I'll fish them in the harbors and stuff, Long Beach Harbor, and I'll fish calicos with the wall of them every now and then. But when it comes to fishing calicos and big sand bass, right here, this setup right here, my Pen 400. The stopping power on this thing, one, is insane. And it's a gorgeous reel in my opinion. And I mean, just the stopping power alone is so nice. I mean, this thing stops bass. Like I just lock down the drag, nothing to worry about. I feel like never had one bass pull drag on it when it's locked up. And I mean, except for a black sea bass. One time we were at Santa Barbara Island. It's on the Instagram if you guys want to see that. I was fishing the double hookup bait rig and I think I got popped by a black sea bass. He ended up breaking me off, but yeah, I couldn't stop that thing. Probably like 150 pound fish, but if you're talking calicos and sand bass, you're not going to be stopped. And obviously you guys see this rod, much, much denser rod right here, 20 to 45 pound. Just, this is my brute force stopping stick and I love this setup. And if you guys are targeting calicos, big ones and big sand bass, I recommend that 400 size reel. 
but you guys are mainly in the harbor predominantly and you like if a bass pulls a little drag or something, 300 size reel is just fine. It does have stopping power to it, but just not as much obviously as the 400. All right guys, so as you guys saw, this is our first tackle tip video. Leave a like if you guys liked it. I've never made one of these before. And uh, comment below if you guys want more tackle tips. And just say like, yo, I want a tackle tip on Yellowtail, I want a tackle tip on this. And I'll get it all set up for you guys. Because yeah, I got some DMs about it after the sand bath video. Like, yo, can you make a video of like your tackle, everything? I was like, all right, let's get to it. But yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions, I mean, we'll be fishing some calico bass, maybe this Saturday at Catalina. I don't know, honestly, because the reports are kind of funky. I'm just waiting for something to happen. But as of right now, it's looking like either calico or maybe attempt yellowtail, but I don't know yet. But yeah, guys, don't forget to check out the merch, support the channel. You. I'll probably be having a big giveaway coming up soon with the merch and stuff. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, guys, we'll catch you on the water next episode. Peace.